지금 오. 오. Hello. Hi, b e a Hello. I'm just having my black currant jam on my toast for my breakfast and reading of Charles the First and Charles the Second. Another narrow boat. Quite a long way up to the top of the lock to the bottom of the lock. Here we are exiting the b e v e r lock behind the other narrow boat that we had passed just a few moments ago. And there's another narrow boat waiting to enter the lock here to our left. cabin toward the stern. We have our kitchen area, two little chairs, big chairs for us to enjoy sitting in. And as you can see here, we have one bag of souvenirs. And despite what Pitt may be thinking or saying, we as of yet do not need a little trailer behind the boat. To take all of our souvenirs, our kitchen galley area, our mighty fine little green. Where's our little green? Ah, uh, there it is. A little green bread box. Yeah. Nice little flock of sheep along the river Severn. On this fine Thursday morning, afternoon now, we have another narrow boat approaching. Seems to be rush hour just at the moment. Approaching 
building the whole block, the whole street bridge is being repaired, as is quite evident. But we're going on down straight into the whole block. Leaving this Holt Lock, the River Severn. Here we are approaching the Lincoln Lock at just after 1400 in the afternoon as a narrow boat is leaving the lock. This is our last lock before we get off, turn off the River Severn onto the canal. Aha! We have the green light to enter. Here we are going into the lock. Here we are inside the Lincoln lock. It's beginning to fill. It's my job to hold this rope steady here around the cleat at the bow of the boat and slowly inch it up the side as the water rises up. This time we are in the lock by ourselves. The previous two locks today, we've had someone with us. We're almost full here. The water level is almost up to where it should be. Here we go. Excellent. Here we are at the locks. First of four locks right here in Starport upon Starport upon Severn. And we have Pitt working for his supper. Earning his supper. There we have the clock tower of the Starport Basin, narrowboat basin, showing the incorrect time. Off of the Starport lock. Looking back toward the River Severn, you can see the second third and fourth blocks going down to the river or beginning from the river the first second third blocks as they are so numbered this way here we are leaving the Stourport narrowboat basin Quite a few long narrow boats moored here. And here, this terribly dark and damp looking 
place is our York Street lock. Here we are on the Severin, Severin Canal, towpath on the right. Loud blast to clear our way around the bend. This bridge is identified as the Mitten Chapel Bridge, number seven. All of the bridges have names, as do the locks. We are approaching one of my favorite pub names, Bird in the Hand. Really quite charming, quite lovely little gardens. There's the little cat all along the river plain. Nice little gardens, little patio area, sitting places, little flowers here and there. Here we are on Saturday morning after being on the boat for one week. We're on the Severn Canal and these are some of the rocks that we'll see at different times along the way. Some of the sandstone, sandstone cliffs that they have here. Here we are at the Debdale Lock, and there's a cave to explore on the sandstone wall. Here we are at the Whittington Lock, Saturday morning. It's truly beautiful morning. 
for English narrowboat canal travel. Approaching the Stew Pony Bridge. Ooh. Ooh. Dark Dungeon. Has it spelled Stu P O N E Y? Big dog in the background behind this iron gate. There is Karis. Wave, Karis. Say hello. I'm doing a video. No waving? There you go. Here come the boat. We need to close those doors back there first, behind the boat. We need to go behind the boat. The stone stew pony locked the old toll house. Doggy is still with us. Saris is boldly pulling the lock door closed. So we have Pit lounging on the boat, the infamous hit, the chauvinist wife, forcing his wife to do the work, and now we have child labor law abuser. He's most probably sipping his coffee right behind me here on the boat. Oh no, he's sitting there while he has the other child holding the boat. This being the first of this morning's challenge, number eight of the Delft locks. There are eight locks. We're beginning from the bottom. Here we go. Delft Street locks, we have eight of them. Here, Pitt's going back to the boat. Hold it as the lock fills. This is number eight in the series for the Delft Street Locks. Here we go. Welcome to the Delft Locks. Looking into the very belly of the Delft Locks.
here we have a very nice shopping area in Birmingham, just along the canal. These are the cast iron canal bridges built by the Toll Inns Iron Works. These bridges were placed here around 1831. In the background we have the Cobbs engine house. This location is Windmill Junction, where we have moored overnight. Hello, good morning. <clears throat> Hello, good morning. The fourth of the canal bridges built by the Toll Inn Works Company. We're in Birmingham just now. This old bumble hole spot has been turned into a nature preserve. It used to be full of glass furnaces, smelting houses, open hearth fires, all types of mining operations were going on here. And um, this is emitting all types of fumes that were giving this country its name, the Black Country. Windmill End Junction, where we moored yesterday evening, has four canal bridges built by the Toll Inn Iron Works. These bridges were installed around 1831. They're quite lovely, quite sturdy too. They feel very sturdy as one is walking over them. We're leaving Windmill in Junction. The Bumble Hole Conservation Area. This is the old Cobb's Engine House. This the machine that this building used to contain, uh, this old pump would pump water from the local mines to prevent flooding down in the mines. And it, at one time, the book says that it was able to pump 400 gallons, 400,000 gallons of water out of the mines per day. Right now they've turned this into a lovely little urban nature preserve. Yesterday afternoon I watched a mother coot swimming across the canal, gathering food and then returning to feed her two little coot cooties who were hiding in the little reeds and bushes along the canal. The toll in works. These really are wonderful bridges. I like them a lot. Just now we're approaching the Netherton Tunnel. The Nether Netherton Tunnel here in Birmingham, Birmingham was completed in 1858, opened in 1858 and is 3,027 yards 
in length. And it was built with a large enough bore for a towpath to be on either side of the tunnel. Originally it had gas lighting, but later the lighting was converted to electricity. It does pass deep underground, but even though it's underground, we're still 453 feet above sea level. This was originally built to relieve congestion over in the Dudley Tunnel. This tunnel runs on a parallel course to the Dudley Tunnel and it uh, joins the Birmingham Mainline Canal over at Dudley Port. All right, we're just about ready to lose light here for 3,027 yards. The sign says 2,776 meters. Has two-way traffic. It says the maximum time, travel time through the tunnel is one hour and we are instructed to keep right. Ooh. I'm reading the sign here as we're entering. It says, following the completion, this was reopened in 1984. So they had uh, some reworking of the tunnel around 30-something years ago. And here we are in the middle of the tunnel. See you on the other side. Still in the Netherton Tunnel. And ever since we've entered, there's been a light down here. I presume at the proverbial end of the tunnel. It's quite something to see this light way somewhere off far down in there. So I guess that little saying is true. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Less than a hundred meters to go now to the end of the Netherton Tunnel. There have been some spooky damn illusions here toward the end, so close to the exit. I think it's caused by the light coming through. There's only one other person that we met in the tunnel today, and that was a bicyclist with a little light in the front who was on the right towpath. have finally reached the light at the end of the tunnel. Yay! It's about five minutes to ten here this morning. Monday morning, May 23rd. Our wonderful, fantastic captain, after having successfully steered us through the Netherton Tunnel. distance I thought this was a statue but it's just a couple of 
big iron pipes coming out of the bridge and going into this little brick house. Here we are approaching Galton Tunnel. Very short little tunnel, about 122 yards long. One really wouldn't believe that we're in the middle of a huge city. This is the Galton Bridge. You really wouldn't believe we're in the middle of a huge city except for bridge graffiti, of course. But it's tr quite tranquil here with the little walking paths along the canal. There's a lot of nature, ducks and geese and little birds flying around, some blackberry bushes, ferns, some yellow flag iris, irises quite lush ferns, some ivy, English ivy, here we are in the tunnel, an old steam-powered narrow boat here on the canal in Birmingham. Central Birmingham. Many narrow boats here in Central Birmingham. A little water bus, a little small, cute little pink water bus. pink water bus. Wednesday morning as we're leaving Birmingham, headed for Hockley Heath. This is quite a building. I call it the Lego building. 
the developers here are calling it the cube. Or at least that's what the shopping center part of it is called. The cube. As you can see, it's sitting right here on the canal. There are shops here that are going to be put in. There are only a few that are already there. But it's quite unique. I find it attractive in a modernistic sense. And here is our little silver signet. It has fired up the engine at about 9.08 this morning. It's quite breezy, quite chilly. We're glad we have the central heating on board. We're ready to set off for hot flea heath. We've just left the Worcester Birmingham Canal and turned onto the Stratford Oak up on Avon Canal. And this is our first lock. It's in disuse. It's known as the guillotine lock. Oh no, wait. They have another chance to get my head after this little tunnel. Really didn't work there. Ah, made it through head intact. Approaching Brandwood Tunnel, 322 meters. It's a two-way tunnel. Once again, we have the light at the end of a tunnel. Approaching the Shirley drawbridge on Stratford-on-Avon Canal, we need to stop and draw up the bridge. Off to the right of the Shirley drawbridge, we have some flag irises, yellow flag irises, and here is another snap of the Shirley drawbridge that we're going to need to raise using a British Waterways water mate key. Shirley Bridge is opening. It's bridge number eight on the Stratford on Avon Canal. neat little rod across the road is stopping traffic and here comes Pitt with the boat. And then I guess I should I'll come back.
drawbridge. Here we go. Operating the camera and lifting the drawbridge. This is bridge number 26 on the Stratford upon Avon Canal. Here's the uh, windless mechanism that I'm turning. There you go. I'm doing it. And the bridge is rising. Yay! Casting off our last full day on the canal. Our night was spent canal side by the towpath beside this lovely little pasture full of woolly booger, woolly booger sheep. I believe we have six locks to go. Approaching lock 33 on the Stratford upon Avon Canal. On our left, lovely little flag irises. And just before the lock is a, supposed to be a little short aqueduct, the yarning gale aqueduct. Lock 34, as we approach, and this is the one with the yarning gale aqueduct. I had made a mistake about saying that we were passing over that aqueduct at lock 33. It's here at lock 34. The Yarning Gale Aqueduct. Captain Pitt and the Silver Signet approaching the Yarning Dale Aqueduct. This is at lock number 34, the Stratford upon Avon Canal, crossing the aqueduct. And into the lock. Now the lock laborer must go and close the gate. These are some examples of local artwork done by students at the Wooten Wan Youth Club. These images were drawn onto wood and then carved. This is at the lock number 34. And this shows an example of the traditional round-roofed houses that you find at this southern part of the Stratford-upon-Avon Canal. This little creature is a bat. 
this yarning, yarning, yarning Dale Aqueduct was originally made of wood. It was replaced with this iron aqueduct in 1834 when a flood washed out the wooden one. That must have been quite a flood. Captain Pitt doing a tad bit of labor on the lock. Just using okay. that one on the video. Yeah, <laughs> there it is on the video. Pitt is standing in front of the bucket lock cottage. This is a fine example of a round roofed cottage located beside the lock for the lock keeper. Seems to be a more modern house that's been attached. These type of buildings with the rounded roof are found on the southern part of the Stratford-upon-Avon Canal. Here I am walking on the towpath, going toward lock number 35. Sort of a bumpy recording here. Preston Bagot lock number 37. This is our next to the last lock on our canal tour. This house was built in 1810 and extended in 1989. This round roofed cottage also has a unique little turrets, a couple of little turrets on top of its chimney. And the Union Jack seems to be stuck in the crane wind vane. Earlier I misspoke myself. The Union Jack is stuck with the heron wind vane, not the crane. There are quite a few herons here on the canal. Such a lovely, tranquil spot. Lock number 38, da -da 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 -da. our last lock of the canal trip, and it seems to be a lucky time as there's a boat entering and they'll fill it up, and then we'll just scoot right in 
lower it, and scoot right out. Yay! What a grand time on the canal. Here we are in our final lock of our canal trip. These kind people are spoiling us, doing the lock for us. Slowly we're going down. A hundred and fifteen or a hundred and sixteen locks. We're not quite sure. Kit and I have a difference in our count. We'll have to check. We're approaching Bridge 51, also known as the Green Lane Bridge. This is an example of the old divided bridges that were constructed so that the canal boats could take the rope of the horse that was on the towpath directly through the bridge. Up at the top there, the bridge is split. and they would pass the rope through this part. We're approaching the Wooten Wan boat basin where we originally began our tour two weeks ago tomorrow. Straight ahead is a little aqueduct that we went over when we left the basin. And to our left are the moorings for all of the boats. There's also a pub here called the Navigation Inn. And our rental car is parked here in the car park. Here's the pub, the navigation in. Had a marvelous tour.